A recent worldwide study found that more than one out of 10 people has had Lyme disease, the most common tick-borne illness that can sometimes leave patients with lifelong health issues. The signs of Lyme disease include that telltale rash that many times looks like a bullseye with the tick bite in the center. Patients can also experience fever, muscle and joint pain, headache, nausea, and vomiting. That study looked at data from 89 countries and found 14.5% of people had the bacteria that causes Lyme disease in their blood. Joining us now to talk about Lyme disease and what it is and how it's treated is Dr. Bobby Pritt, a clinical parasitology expert at Mayo Clinic. Good morning, Dr. Pritt. Good morning. All right, let's start with exactly what Lyme disease is. And I know this is a very emotional topic for people who have dealt with this. So what are some of the problems that it can create? Yeah, well, you asked what it is. It's a bacterial infection that's transmitted through the bite of a tick. And specifically an Ixodes scapularis or black-legged tick. Sometimes we call it a deer tick. And the bacterium itself is spiral shaped. So we call it a spirochete. And the most common cause of Lyme disease in the United States is called Borrelia burgdorferi. Unfortunately, this bacterium, once it gets into your body, if not treated, can set up shop and cause a chronic infection that can cause a whole host of problems. And timing is everything when it comes to Lyme disease. So how do you treat it and why is it so important to get it treated right away? You want to treat it with antibiotics early on. And sometimes you're really basing the diagnosis on that bullseye rash, which may not always be noticeable or present. If you do not treat it right away, it is more likely to disseminate throughout the body and cause a whole host of other problems, including long lasting arthritis that is very hard to treat. So early diagnosis is really key. Are there a lot of ticks in this area? Is this something we, we need to be really careful about? In, in Florida, we're actually considered a low prevalent state. So that's good news for all of us. There were only 80 cases uh, recently reported that were conform, uh, confirmed to the CDC and about another 80 cases in, uh, last year that were probable. So about 160 cases, that's not very high, but it certainly does happen. So I think it's important for people to know about Lyme disease in this area, but really most of the cases in the United States are in the upper Northeast and upper Midwest. Well, and certainly in the middle of summer, especially this, <laughs> this spring that we're having, a lot of people are escaping the heat in Florida to go to the mountains and that's, and that's right. where it's prevalent. What are some of the things that you, could, you should do to avoid getting a tick bite while you're outside? Yeah, well, this is very important. So first of all, if you're going to an area where Lyme disease is really endemic, so if you are escaping the heat and going to the mountains, you really need to know what types of diseases are present there. And tick-borne diseases are always on the list. So using an insect repellent, uh, a tick repellent, such as one that contains DEET, I recommend at least 30% DEET. You spray that on your skin. You could also use picaridin or oil of lemon eucalyptus. And then you can uh, spray another tick repellent on your clothing itself, and uh, that would be permethrin. So that's really good to spray on your clothes, on your, your gear, your backpack, but then even just simple things like tucking your pants into your socks so there's less skin available for the ticks to get to, mm -hmm. and, and staying on the paths rather than going off into the long grasses where the ticks are going to be present. All great advice, Dr. Bobby Pritt from Mayo Clinic. Thank you so much. Thank you.